it's good to see a, a share of our guys getting getting those awards. Um, you know, the, the game started off slowly for us. I, uh, we did not play extremely well uh, early on, but, uh, you know, give credit to uh, Kent State. I thought they came and wanted to, to certainly battle and play hard, and, and uh, uh, they, they want to win too. And uh, so it started off to where we got a slow start, uh, but as the game went on, I thought um, uh, we played better and uh, continued to play better as, uh, as we went into the, the second half. So I was pleased with the, really the outcome and the effort of our guys and what they accomplished. We got things we got to get straightened out, uh, dropping too many balls. Our passing attack needs to be uh, better than, uh, than what it's showing uh, lately. Um, I think we can be a very good running football team and a very good throwing football team. Um, we need to hit a little more percentage, higher percentage of, uh, of our passes. Um, holding on to the ball would help. Um, and so, um, you know, that area in particular, I think, from the offensive end of it. You know, we've been hit and miss a little bit with taking care of the ball and not taking care of the ball. We did a pretty good job in this past game, won the turnover ratio by, uh, by one. Uh, and, and so it's always good to win that. And, you know, we'd like to win it by two plus. That's, that's kind of our goal. Um, when we go into uh, to a game, but um, you know, in this one, we'll take the the lead in that by uh, by one. So, um, was a uh, was overall a, a pretty good game on both sides of the ball and special teams. Too many penalties again in special teams. That'll have to be um, addressed. Defense, I think, is getting better as uh, we go through the year. I, I think our um, secondary is continuing to show improvement. You know, our linebackers. Um, even though they've been banged up, have played well throughout the, the course of the season. And in our defensive line, um, you know, our, our guys inside uh, seem to be holding up fairly, uh, fairly well. Uh, we've played a number of rush ins who have gotten experience, so I think that'll help us as we uh, go through the remainder part of the, uh, of the season. Uh, big game next Tuesday with Miami. Um, why? Your approach 13 years ago when, when you came here was not to downplay that at all, to, to kind of embrace the rivalry aspect of that particular game, and it's, it appears to serve you well. Why, why was that initial decision uh, made to, to kind of, you know, it's not just another game, it's a rivalry game. You guys have kind of been, you know, upfront and honest about dealing, up, dealing with it in that way since you got here. Yeah, um, well, I think a couple reasons. Uh, probably uh, it was important to, the, to our fans. Um, it's important to our student body, uh, the community, um, as it is to Miami. You know, it's important to their fans, important to their, their community. So I, when I got here, um, I was, it was made clear that that, that was a, our main rival. And um, so I jumped on board. You know, it, ma it made sense to, um, to, to do that. And you, you guys know from day one, uh, if you, those of you that were uh, around uh, me for a period of time know that you know I, I work at approaching every game pretty much the same and try to get our team to understand that and, and I think these guys do um, because it only takes one game where you're supposed to win and you should win and you don't win to uh, all of a sudden make you understand that and um, and so you know we're, we're serious about every single game that um, that's on board for us and uh, and so um, but, you know, the Miami game seemed to be uh, really important to a lot of people. And uh, so I made it important certainly to, to myself. It already was important to the team because, you know, we, we came and took over a team. It wasn't our, our recruits. And, um, and, and, and so we worked at uh, trying to, you know, uphold our end of, um, uh, of the rivalry. You know, it's a very good rivalry. It's always been a hard-fought physical uh, football game and uh, decided on a few plays here, here or there. So um, in that regard, I, I think it's, it's been a great rivalry. This is the, the closest thing you're going to have to a full bye week uh, throughout the course of the regular season. What kinds of things do you do to, to recharge the batteries or, or to make sure you're as healthy as you can be heading down the stretch? Yeah, we're, gonna, we're giving them three complete days off. Uh, we give them Sunday um, off, and uh, we give them today off. So they don't even have to come in and look at us, um, which, you know, whatever. <laughs> 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 uh, 
but uh, in, in, in any case, um, you know, th those two days, they've, uh, they've certainly earned that. Tomorrow, we're going to be going on the field for really uh, uh, about nine periods, which is five minute periods, 45 minutes. So a very short period of time. It'll be like a fast Friday, um, but it'll be mainly, uh, mainly teamwork uh, for us. We want to get them out, get them running again. Our coaches are on the road recruiting, and so will be myself and our uh, grad assistants. Um, and, and so, uh, and then Wednesday, um, we will give them another day off. And so they'll, they'll practice, a short practice tomorrow, along with lifting. Um, and so in three out of the four days, they'll have, they'll have off. And then that allows us to get in a true weekly schedule. So uh, Thursday will, will be uh, our typical Monday. Friday will be our typical Tuesday, so forth, and leading up to the game. So we think that's the best approach. They, they, they need to get some bumps and bruises healed up. Um, you know, some of these guys have, have uh, been playing uh, really banged up, and, and um, as most teams are at this point in time in the, in the season. And so you, I think you got to be smart on how you use your time off. Uh, you, you know, would you like to have a full week off? Uh, yes, but that's not the way it works in the MAC when you have Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or Thursdays games as you start to get into uh, the month, end of October, month of November. Uh, Coach, uh, D'Angelo Smith, uh, apparently, I guess he gave the cornerbacks a pizza party after Bowling Green because, you know, they didn't allow any uh, deep passes in that game. Uh, I guess, how do you think that, you know, the secondary can keep on improving if, you know, maybe they get these kind of, like, incentives that, you know, that they had against Bowling Green? Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's – that's, that's not the reason they're necessarily improving <laughs> yeah, uh, to, right. to get that, you know. Um, I'm sure they eat a lot of pizza in there – their time uh, at Ohio, but uh, but um, you know it's 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 just uh, you're allowed to invite your players over for uh, uh, what you'd call a meal every now and then, and, and obviously he's uh, he's doing that. I think he's I think it's showing that he's pleased with their progress, and um, that they're you know playing the kind of ball that he expects out of them as a as the corner coach, and uh, it's a difficult position as we all know, um, a lot of good receivers and. You know, we'll face a really big receiver in um, in Miami this uh, this this week. A tall guy that Garner can catch the ball and and uh, run great routes. And and um, uh, but they in saying that they do spread the ball around very well. You know, um, so there's challenges there. But there's challenges every week for uh, for cornerbacks. Uh, I, I think, and I'm sure all of you guys noticed that. You know, lately teams have been using their tight ends and splitting them out as wide receivers, right? Um, you saw that we, we caught a touchdown pass with our tight end split out as a wide receiver. Um, so, you know, that's coming into play now. And so your 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 six-foot receiver is up against a 6'5", six 6'6", six six guy some of the time. And then when they're not up against a 6'5", six 6'6", six six guy, they're up against a guy with speed. And... Um, and so to play that position well requires great, great technique, um, and it requires great belief in yourself. I think D'Angelo has done a very good job of, of uh, teaching technique and uh, also helping those guys believe in their, their ability to get the job done. Uh, Coach, over the last two games, you guys have averaged 335 yards of rushing, and you know that looks well on AJ and Dorian and Nathan. But what can you say about the offensive line's uh, role in that, and how big have they been over these last two games? Yeah, no, no, no one, uh, no one gets huge yardage in a in a football game without an offensive line um, that's doing their job. Um, you know, there's really good backs in in the league. We've got really good backs, um, but you know, if, if they can't get to the linebacker depth with blocking, then you're, you're not going to have much of a, a, a running game. It's their job to get the back to the linebacker depth, and it's the back's job after that to get things done, make a quick move on a back or maybe make a quick move on the safety and, and get extra yards. Um, so offensive line is paramount in terms of, of um, having a, a good rushing attack. Coach Johnson's done a great job with those guys. Um, you know, we got some, we got two freshmen playing. Uh, they're, they're 
gaining a lot of experience in, in the offensive line. You know, we've lost Jared McCray for a little bit of time. We, uh, we lost Darrell Wood for a, a little bit of, uh, for probably the rest of the season, the way it's looking, um, which, you know, you take two guys out of there that um, have been experienced guys for you. Um, but to replace them and, and to, uh, I don't want to say not miss a beat because you miss those guys, but, but to be able to function at a high rate, um, I, I think it's a credit to, to our players, credit to Coach Johnson. And, you know, he does have the title of uh, rushing game coordinator and he's done a good job with that. And uh, the speed option has been a really successful play for you guys this year. So what have you seen from Nathan and the, the two lead running backs that have kind of made that play successful this yeah, year? Yeah, it starts with the quarterback. Um, you know, the, an option play is designed uh, to be successful. In order to be successful, um, you have to seal off backers. And that starts with your offensive line. And then you got to have a quarterback that uh, knows how to attack the, the defensive end, knows when to pitch it, when to fake pitch it and keep, or when to just turn up and keep, period. Um, Nathan seems to have a knack for that, you know, um, and, and you can see it in his, in his play. Um, you know, we've, we practice it a lot. Um, we uh, are having success with it. Um, teams will have to slow that down a little bit. I'm sure they'll they'll work on that, um, red zone probably especially. But in, in saying that, you know the way to slow it down a little bit is to spread your guys out on defense a little bit more. You know, and and um, which we hope will open up the inside game, which has been pretty productive for us down there anyway. That's probably what's allowing us to to run options is that they're concerned about our inside running game down there. Um, so you know, one kind of kind of uh, balances the other uh, in, in regards to having success. Uh, you know, if you have a good inside game, that allows you to uh, ha have the ability to execute usually a good option game. And so, you know, so it starts with the inside game, then you spread out from there. And I know it's early. You still have over a week till the Miami game. But what's the early outlook on uh, Brendan Cope? And how important will it be to get him back into the fold for Tuesday's game? Well, you need all your weapons against Miami, you know, because um, obviously they're they're a very good football team. You know, they they're an experienced football team. They had um, eight guys uh, on both sides of the ball from last year's team that were, were counted on as starters, and uh, so you know that's offense, defense. That's that's a really experienced football team, and they were really good last year. Um, so um, you know that that's. You know that's a factor. You you know what you're going to be uh, be up against with those guys. You had you had another part of that question. Yeah. Uh, what's the early outlook on Brendan's uh, prognosis to come back for that game? Um, it's probably good. Um, exactly when we'll get him back to practice is you know the question. We're hoping that you know he can come back and practice for three or four days leading up up to the game. You know that will be. Uh, that's usually important, you know. Uh, we've had receivers trying to con keep themselves on the field, and the only way to do that it lately has been to not practice them all the time be because of their injury and get them ready for game. But but does that carry on over into drop passes and not being as sharp on your routes? You know, when you don't when you can't practice um, a lot, and does that does that affect your timing from your quarterback to those receivers? Sure, it does. And, and so um, we're hoping, you know, to, to get guys back in time to uh, be able to function well in practice. So that will carry on over in the game. Is there a timetable for Julian Ross or just any kind of update on him? Probably another couple of weeks. Okay. Um, not necessarily for him, but, but do you think it's important with the way that A.J. and Dorian are both very physical runners to have somebody that's like a third, a third guy into that backfield? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, he, he's proven to us to be a very good back as a true freshman, you know, and uh, he's, he's not as big as, as uh, Dorian or AJ, uh, but he's really got good quickness, uh, got good speed, um, and he's got good toughness, and uh, that's what all our backs have across the board, and um, that has served us well. Um, and then just the third quarter of this year, you guys are, are plus 76 as a team. Is there anything that goes into halftime specifically or that you think this team is um, particularly good at that, that makes those yeah. second-half adjustments? Yeah. Well, you know, 
um, you do make some adjustments, obviously, um, but it, a lot of times it comes down to just executing better, you know, playing better, um, and sometimes it, it, it takes the early part of the game, uh, if you're not functioning well, um, to get that out of the way, get in and get settled down and, and have, have your coaches get after you a little bit in terms of your execution and, and, and then to, you know, look at what we can do against what they're doing. Um, and so there's a little bit of everything that kind of goes into the halftime, um, I, I think, in, in terms of being ready to play uh, your best ball in the second, second half. But some of it comes down to what your coaches can get done. Some of it just comes down to the players just looking, uh, having a chance to now sit back, look one another in the eye and say, hey, you know, this is not what we're all about. We, we, we need to play better football here, you know. And so a lot of stuff goes on during that half. Coach, you mentioned uh, Coach Johnson, his impact with the, the run game. Um, was that, I, I think I asked this at the beginning of the season, but now halfway through, give or take, um, was, was that sole reason to make that switch so Tim could focus on the, the passing game and he could focus on the running game? And in and, and your mind, what impact has he made other than the stats? Uh, um, what was the last part? Other than the, on the stats on paper, what kind of impact has he made? Who? Uh, uh, Coach Johnson. Oh, Coach Johnson. Um, well, um, I think he motivates his guys, uh, n number one. You know, I mean, he is really very, very thorough. Um, if we know that if a guy, a, a lineman is in our system, um, by the time he gets to his second, third year, uh, he's going to be a much, much better football player. And, um, and, you know, some guys progress at a rate that's, that's just okay. Um, other coaches can get him to progress at a faster rate. Um, you know, he, he's very particular in his coaching style, and obviously um, he's driven in, in terms of wanting him to take the right step. Don't be one inch off on this or one inch off on that. And, I mean, he coaches every single play um, uh, with that importance. And, um, and so it can be frustrating sometimes, I think, if you're a young guy, you know, if you're a, a, a freshman and – you know, you got a thousand things going through your head, and you step up to the line of scrimmage, and the ball snapped. You know, maybe your head explodes, <laughs> and, you, and 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 you really don't get get much done. Um, that that might happen a few times, uh, but it, it it gets overridden uh, quickly by um, um, by proper technique, doing all the right things, giving yourself as a player to have have your best chance to be a dominant lineman. And so that's what Coach Johnson is all about. What's his role during the game? I know he's in, in the press box, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, you don't have to walk me through yeah. what he does on game day, but what's yeah. he usually do during a game when it comes to calling plays? Yeah. Well, he's on the headset. He's okay. uh, suggesting, um, and he and Tim will communicate back and forth. Um, and, uh, you know, all our offensive coaches, defense coaches are on their own lines on the, on the headset, so everybody can communicate. Um, so... You know, Tim will visit with Coach Johnson some. Coach Johnson will visit with Tim some over the, over the headset. Um, when the offense is off the field, obviously Coach Johnson's got his offensive lineman over there in the group, and they're, they're going through what, what just happened. Okay. And, um, and so, you know. But, it, but when, when it comes into a running situation, is Dave telling Tim what he wants to run particularly, maybe something that other position coaches don't yeah, do? Yeah, you know, Coach Johnson, when a, when a running – down comes up and you say, "Well, we got to run the ball." Coach Johnson, go ahead. What do you think? Okay. You know, it yeah. it, it it doesn't function that way no. very very well, as you know. Yeah. You know, um, and and so um, what happens is there's dialogue gone on constantly uh, between the guys on the headset and, and Tim and Izzy and and uh, Dwayne, uh, Coach Dixon. Coach Dixon and uh, you know Brian Haynes and yeah. I mean everybody every, everybody has a chance to um, to communicate at some point in time as to their their thoughts you know but in in, in saying that you know Tim and and um, Dave are are the two guys that communicate most of the time in terms of you know hey if when, when it's time to run hey it, it, this will give us our best chance, you know, and, and so a lot of times they're in agreement on stuff, 
you know. And uh, but the same way with practice, you know, Coach Johnson will script the, the defenses for our running game in practice. You know, Coach Alvin script the defenses for the passing passing game. So um, a lot of a lot of work together on it. Uh, one last thing for me, Jason brought up how you had to embrace the Miami culture when you came here, but what role has it taken in your mind? How have you embraced it? Um, and what are some of your memories from that the Miami game? Well, um, you know, uh, um, obviously when you have two teams that have a rivalry, you better jump on board. And, and you know, that's what I did. And I, I was used to my previous job uh, having some pretty big rivalries also and and so I, I know what rivalries um, are about and how how meaningful it is to the coaches the players the fans um, and and so you you know you just try to if you got it going well you try to keep it going if it's not going so well you try to get it get it turned that's basically what you do for every game you know uh, for every team that you play but you know rivalries are so important to so many people that um, that you just you know, continue to to utilize that as as a part of your game. It's part of what it's all about. You know, um, and you know, I don't want to try to build too much into it. And and um, but um, you know, their their players are really good players. Their coaches are really good coaches. Um, and so you you like to have a rivalry with with teams that have a historic program and and uh, have really good good players. You know, that's what rivalries all are all about. Coach, um, we talked about the health of some of the receivers. Uh, obviously, this past game was Poppy White's first full game back. Uh, when you talk about receiver play, what does it mean to have him back in the fold? Mm -hmm. um, as much as drops have been a problem, it also seems that separation almost in the receiving game has been a problem. But Poppy White having his speed out there, we mm -hmm. saw him get out in space, and you guys take a deep shot. What does mm -hmm. he bring back into the fold for you guys offensively? Yeah, he's an explosive player, and um, they have to know where he's at on the field all the time. And uh, and there maybe are times when, when a team feels like, uh, hey, we've got to do a few things special to slow him uh, down a little bit. Um, so... He's huge to us, uh, but in saying that, you know, we, our our when our, our guys are healthy, our receivers are fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have got fast. Cope, one of the fastest guys on the on the football team, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the fastest. Um, Poppy's got great speed, great quickness, great leaping ab ability, soft hands, smooth runner. He'll run by you when you uh, because he's so smooth and you don't think he's moving, mm -hmm. and and so he's got a lot going for him, uh, self. You know and. Uh, the other other receivers have have the quickness and the speed that you look for to be able to be deep threats as as well as quick slants and the, the rest of the quick game, mm -hmm. and um, so we just want to get them healthy. We just want to get them playing on top of their level. Uh, we we do that, and uh, we can have a good good passing game. And then uh, you spoke uh, in your press conference after the Kent State game about how coming into the game, there hadn't been talk of reaching bowl eligibility, reaching that win mark. Um, do, do you think that, that that not really being a conversation kind of has set the tone for the new expectations that your program has set over the years here? These guys are focused on things more than just reaching a bowl game, yeah. but what else they can accomplish. Yeah. And, they they and want to keep mean? moving this program for the, and their football team for. They want to keep taking steps. Um, you know, we don't want to be plateauing a, across the board. You know, and so now, hey, that's great. You know, nine, nine, nine in a row, uh, bowl el eligibility. Yep. So th you know that's great. Um, but there are other things out there, man, and uh, we we need to go go try to get them. Um, coach, just going off another note. Um, in terms of like recruiting, like I'm doing something on. Uh, you guys been able to go down in Florida real well, and you know, bring players up there. I guess. How do you think that, um, you know, ever since, you know, LeVon Brazil, that Coach Haynes was telling me about, how do you think you guys have been able to uh, recruit players from Florida so well? How we've been able to recruit players? Well, we, mm -hmm. it's a concentrated area um, for us. You know, um, we have established some relationships down down there with coaches, that, um, high school coaches that I, I think uh, can be helpful in terms of identifying top uh, uh, prospects. Um, we know that the, in, in general, there's speed down there with a lot of talent down there. 
Um, so, you know, at times we'll have three coaches uh, down there, different parts of Florida uh, re recruiting. Um, we go down there for uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, universities down there and, um, and their camps, their football camps. We have coaches go to their, some of their camps, just like we have coaches go to Ohio State's camp, Cincinnati's camp, um, Pittsburgh's camp. Um, so, you know, we have guys down there in, in a number of camps down there. And so we're able to identify players, you know, we're on national TV a fair amount of the time. Um, you know, the MAC, obviously when you play those midday games uh, are the only game on uh, a share of the time. And uh, so those guys are, kids are watching them. Uh, you know, they're, they're watching Ohio play. And so we have national recognition. We can go any, anywhere in this country, and generally a player's gonna, gonna know about us. If he's, a, if he's a good football player, he's gonna know that, that, that we play good football here. And, um, and so that, that enables us to, to reach out. And you know, our coaches have been around. You know, Coach Dixon, for instance, coach down there in, in the state of Florida. And, and um, you know, so we have experienced, uh, experienced coaches. And, and so they know what all's involved in, in, in recruiting. And, you know, they've developed good relationships with the high school coaches. And, um, you know, we just go from there. It, we identify the guys. If we have a great year in Florida, maybe, maybe we'll have a great year next year. Maybe, maybe it won't be quite as good. Mm -hmm. uh, but we should be okay, at least, you know. In Ohio, we always start off here, try to um, uh, canvas the, the, the state and identify the, the players here first and, and then go, go wherever, wherever we can. Yeah, um, just to follow up off of that, um, a few of the players, you know, who are, who are from Florida have mentioned, you know, wanting to write their own story. And maybe, you know, even though they get recruited by ACC, SEC schools, they feel drawn to Ohio because they might not, you know, get swept under the radar and kind of be more noticed and receive more recognition. Uh, do you believe that that kind of like is true? Well, um, I, I think we, you know, when it comes to scouts, scouts are here. You know, pro scouts are here on campus. Today the guy brought bagels. You know, um, uh, and, and but we have a ton of scouts uh, that come through our place, and and I think players know that, you know, we've been able to send guys to the NFL, and that that if, if they play good football and if they're of NFL quality, then they're they're going to have a chance to get there uh, from here. So certainly that's important. Being on TV nationally, like like we are, is important for their families down there, um, or anywhere in the country, uh, you know, because. Obviously, their families can't come up and, and, and visit um, uh, for games as, as much as, you know, families that are here in Ohio, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so that, you know, that's a, that, that's a huge uh, plus for us. Um, so uh, when you add it, add it all up, you know, we're able to go almost anywhere and, and uh, do a pretty good job. You know, we've got a few guys on the team from Canada. You know, we have some connections in Canada. That's, that's always good. Uh, I had a question. Did he bring cream cheese too? That's a he violation, did. though, isn't it? A scout? <laughs> Feeding the coaches? <laughs> uh, my question is about Chad Moore. Uh, Chad's, a, Chad's a legacy player here. Did, uh, did you envision him developing into the kind of defender he has been, and specifically his – his easily identifiable skill set of, of being a cover linebacker and, and how much yeah. does that benefit your defense? Yeah, it, it didn't take very long um, to identify uh, the qualities of Chad and what he was all about from, you know, being an athlete and, and his toughness is, you know, he's, he's as tough as they get. And, and you know, he put athleticism with toughness and, and uh, he's bright, man, what's left, you know, and, and so, um, yeah, we we knew that he was going to continue to develop in the program and was going to really, really be good. And just the benefit of, of not having to go to nickel as much or is it, you're able to, to stay in what you want to stay in, what, how does that aid and, and benefit the defense, not only last year but this year as well? You don't have to switch out when they bring a third wide out on the, f on the field. Right. Um, and, and, you know, there's nothing saying they bring a third wide out on the field that they're not going to run the ball. So ha having a linebacker type that's still able to pursue or fill gaps is is what you're after on a third and medium or third and long. Um, you know, teams don't just 
line up and do what you think they're going to do or want them to do, you know. And so you have a guy that's versatile uh, like Chad and the rest of our linebackers are, you know, you can get away with having him on the field in passing situations, which is, which is really a key. When you brought Keith Moore in, did he tell you his younger brother was going to be a player? Was that a package deal back in the day with well, Keith? Well, I, I don't. It wasn't a package deal necessarily, but um, uh, but he mentioned him, and uh, uh, you know, I, I think we were alerted to him uh, without Keith having to Keith having to say uh, uh, too much a, about him, you know. And, and Chad wanted to do it. He wanted to walk on here, you know. So it wasn't a deal where we necessarily had to go beat his door down, and and so. You know, that's you, you want guys that want to be here, man. You know, and it, we knew his brother was really a good player for us, and and uh, Chad has turned out to be uh, to be great.